Coming up on Mountain News at 6, we hear from the former president now of one local animal shelter following his resignation. And a first responder along with his mother are in court after being indicted on charges stemming from a deadly fire truck crash last October. And we are seeing a line of showers and thunderstorms pushing through the area and we do have a flood advisory and a flash flood warning in effect for portions of the viewing area. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. We are learning more about Tony Vaughn's decision to resign from his post as board president of the Kentucky River Regional Animal Shelter. WYMT's Amelia Lee spoke to Vaughn about his decision. I am standing in front of the Kentucky River Regional Animal Shelter where Tony Vaughn stepped down as president on Tuesday. Vaughn says that this decision was two months in the making, maybe even longer. He says all he's ever wanted is for folks to focus on the animals and not on him. He says he's continued to be board president because of his deep care for the pets in the shelter. Vaughn says he hopes that since he will be gone, people will donate money and time to help the shelter if he was a reason they would not. It seemed to be that I'm the roadblock and, you know, I can't let that inhibit what we're trying to do, save the animals. So I figured the best thing to do is take myself out of the equation and all the people that said that they would step up once I was gone, now let's hope they do just that. Vaughn says the petition made in June asking him to resign was not a factor in his decision, nor was the board meeting in early July. As of now, a new board president has not been chosen, but Vaughn hopes that this new president will care about this shelter and the animals in it. In Perry County, Amelia Lee, WYMT, Mountain News. Vaughn will be the board president for the next six days. We will hear from a board member coming up tonight at 11. The trial continues for a Laurel County man accused in the murder of a police officer after a drunk driving incident in 2022. Casey Bird appeared once again in court in Warren County this morning as more witnesses fielded questions from the prosecution and defense. More evidence was brought to the jury today, including surveillance footage that captured the deadly crash. We understand a first responder with Laurel County Ambulance Service and a KSP detective were also among the witnesses. A first responder and his mother were arraigned in Leslie County Circuit Court. Austin and Ethel Turner were indicted on charges stemming from a deadly crash. Fellow first responder Regina Huffman died in the crash. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox tells us what happened during those arraignments. Austin and Ethel Turner both entered not guilty pleas in Leslie County Circuit Court. Austin Turner appeared virtually as he remains at the Leslie County Detention Center. A motion to reduce his bond was declined. His mother, Ethel, physically appeared in court. She was released after posting bond. Turner's attorney requested evidence from prosecuting attorneys in the case. Her pretrial conference is scheduled for October 2nd at 10.30 a.m., while Austin Turner's pretrial conference is set for November 6 at 2 p.m. The defense attorneys and Austin Turner declined to comment on the trial in Leslie County. Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Ethel Turner was also indicted on charges not related to the crash. Turner was charged with several counts of forgery and theft. A Wise County man has been sentenced to 20 years in federal prison for possessing firearms and silencers. Earlier this year, 51-year-old Rodney Allen Pickett was convicted by a jury on one count of conspiracy to distribute 500 grams or more of meth, among others. Witnesses testified at trial that Pickett bought pounds of meth weekly. During a search of Pickett's home, police found several firearms, silencers, and magazines. Guns were among items stolen from vehicles overnight in Wayne County. Monticello police say the two vehicles were parked in a driveway on Wilhite Street. Police say a pistol, two magazines, along with a laptop, drill, and nail gun were all stolen. Investigators believe it happened late last night or early this morning. Anyone with information is asked to call or text the Monticello Police Department's crime tip line at 606-688-7676.
All right, this is just in and popped up a few minutes ago. We do have a flash flood warning in effect now for portions of Rock Castle County. This goes into effect until 9 p.m. I want to go ahead and take a look here at some of the Doppler estimated rainfall totals over the past three hours. You can see that area shaded in blue near the Conway area uh, to the west of Mount Vernon. Uh, across portions of Highway 461, uh, seeing an inch to some places as much as two inches of rain. That's the reason why that flood, uh, flash flood warning is in effect. Flood advisory continues until 8.30 for Laurel, Pulaski, and Rock Castle County. And that's due to this line of showers and thunderstorms that's pushing through. It's over towards the Mount Vernon area at this time. So if you're in the Mount Vernon area, again, flood advisory is in effect, and then that flash flood warning is in effect until 9 o'clock for portions of Rock Castle County. So here's the with live pinpoint Doppler radar, and it's a feast or famine situation. Only a few places are seeing some rain and some thunderstorm activity, but the majority of us are staying mainly dry. Numbers today played out like this. 91 in Hazard, as well as Pikeville and Jackson, 90 in Moorhead, 87 Irvin, 90 in Somerset, 86 in Monticello, Monticello right now is at 84. We're at 75 in Moorhead, 84 in Somerset. London's at 82. That's a rain cooled 82. 91 in Hazard, 89 in Pikeville. So we'll see temperatures in the upper 80s by 7 o'clock. By the time you join us tonight at 11, we'll hover in the upper 70s and low 80s. We'll see mid 70s as we go throughout the overnight hours. And when you wake up in the morning, we'll see temperatures in the 60s and 70s. I'll have the complete first alert forecast coming up in a few minutes. Steve. All right, thank you very much. Well, a teen has finished his recovery at the Fraser Institute in Louisville and is headed back to Eastern Kentucky. 17 year old Ethan Bowling was known as an excellent wrestler and football player in his hometown of Jackson. Back in May, he was hurt in a car crash along with two others. He had a traumatic brain injury and it was weeks before he could sit up or even breathe on his own. He was released from Fraser rehab today about a month after he got there. Bowling's mom says his progress is evident. He's walking, he's talking. I mean, he is as independent as he can be, and we're hoping just to continue the process. Bowling can now walk more than 200 feet without assistance and eat full meals on his own. Great to see. Well, school districts throughout the mountains are getting back into the swing of things with several counties hosting the first day of school today. WYMT's Buddy Forbes was in Pike County as students walked into a new school year. Good morning, Mustang. We are all so happy to see our world students back on Mustang Mountain. Pike County kids are back in the classrooms. It's a new school year is always uh, it's, it's challenging, uh, but it's also exciting. As a new school year welcomes changes, like the promotion of the district's new superintendent, Freddie Bowling. We're excited for the, for the school year. Uh, had a great first morning. Our schools are ready, they're open. Our teachers are energetic, our staff's energetic. While Bowling has worked in education for decades and previously served as assistant superintendent, he says the new role and new year come with a lot of new opportunities. Uh, there's really a, an excitement in the air. Uh, anytime you got new staff, new role, new superintendent, uh, we're all just we're excited to get started and, and see what happens. With four new principals taking the reins at some of the area schools, like Millard School's Jake Robinson, who is filling the shoes of former principal Misty Riddle. Okay, you are going to succeed. Yeah, I hope really we can just continue the Mustang way here, uh, the culture that she's kind of created. And, you know, I, I bring my own kind of, uh, uh, you know, different uh, strategies into the mix. But, uh, you know, she, she's really been beneficial to me. He says seeing the kids back in the desks and having the teachers and staff reuniting with their callings has been a great way to start the new year. We're just blessed here with such a tremendous community and support for these kids. Um, and, and really, this whole school was such a team effort. And educators agree that no matter what changes come as classes begin. I just hope our kids are safe, first and foremost, and that our students um, are uh, just educated to a very high level. The most important thing is the kids who walk through the doors in Pike County. Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Officials say they are looking forward to seeing the students excel this year. And we want to remind you that you can go to our website or news app to see when your school starts back. We've compiled a list of schools and their start dates on WYMT.com. Quite a few schools started today, while some will begin the new year tomorrow. 
and in the next few weeks. We have start dates for those schools in our coverage area, also out of West Virginia, Virginia, and Tennessee. From 2013 to 2022, there were nearly 1,000 deadly school transportation related crashes. A sobering statistic to remember as school buses are getting back on the road with the new year beginning. Steve Chappelle, school safety coordinator with Warren County Public Schools, said these incidents can come from a plethora of issues. This includes things like distracted driving, speeding, and ignoring bus warning signs. We enforce uh, those laws, uh, star mom violations, uh, and we're very strict about them. Uh, Amy Chandler, our county attorney, is, is uh, very proactive on that. So is our sheriff, Britt Hightower, uh, Warren County Public Schools as well. Um, you know, if, if we see a driver pass a school bus uh, or commit a violation around a school bus, we will issue a citation on that. Uh, and that's one of the things that we do to keep our, our kids safe. Penalties for illegally passing a stop arm start with a $100 to $200 fine and can lead up to several months in prison if, the, if this continues. Well, we have an update tonight in a prominent murder case in eastern Kentucky. A defense attorney has filed a motion to dismiss the charges filed in the Amber Spradlin murder case. In two court motions obtained by WYMT, Michael K. or M.K. McKinney, the third's attorney, argued in a motion that the court failed to return the indictment against him in open court and there was a breach of the secrecy of the grand jury. McKinney's attorney also filed a motion to reduce his bond, stating the prosecutors, quote, could not produce a single piece of evidence supporting their claims to the court or the defendants, end quote. McKinney's defense attorney also wrote in their motion that the allegations made by the Commonwealth have been nothing more than a regurgitation of the theories promoted by the rumor mill. End quote. Of course, he's accused of killing Amber Spradlin last year. The attorney argued that McKinney was not a flight risk, and since the purpose of bond is to ensure a defendant appears in court, his bond should be reduced. For a more in-depth look at these motions, you can find the story on WYMT.com. In Harlan County, an active shooter training session was conducted earlier today. The session took place at Harlan County High School. These are images from Kentucky State Police. Troopers say the goal of the training was to equip school personnel with the skills to keep the learning environment safe. The National Park Service is seeking public comment on proposed fee changes at Cumberland Gap National Historical Park. Camping fees last changed in 2022, but are cheaper than area rates. Other park fees have stayed the same for the last 15 years. Some proposed fee changes include the Gap Cave Tour for, for adults from $8 to $12 in 2025 and renting the old Bartlett Park as a picnic shelter all day from $30 to $50 in 2025. We have much more about this at WYMT.com. One Eastern Kentucky representative is being recognized for his service in the Kentucky General Assembly. The Kentucky Association for Career and Technical Education presented its award for meritorious service to Representative Bobby McCool of Van Leer and Johnson County. It was presented on behalf of Career and Technical Education in Kentucky. All right, weather headlines for today. Renegade shower or two not out of the question this evening. Lots of sunshine is in the forecast. And fall, is that you? Well, not quite, but I'll talk more about that coming up in the first alert forecast in a few minutes. Stay with us.